Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mm. First up for D&D today, we have our King Leo D&D mug from our friends at King Leo D&D. Hi, King Leo D&D. Um, and inside of it, we have this uh, lemon and e echinacea. I should have looked up how to say it. I did this last time I had it, too. Tea from Bigelow Benefits. Uh, it's really good. Um, it's kind of florally, a little bit fruity. It's, ve it's, it's very nice. I like it a lot. Uh, not really the point, though. Um, moving on forward here, we are talking today at the suggestion of my lovely fiance. I looked at her and went, babe, what do I need? To what, what should I talk about? And she went, ghosts. So we're talking about ghosts today um, because, honestly, it's that season. Why not? Um, so I went through and I, I scrolled through all the undead. I took a look through them. Uh, the official materials, obviously you can find some incredible things in Kobold, Kobold Press and uh, Grim Hollow. Uh, these are official material ghosts. Uh, I pulled what I believe to be uh, the best ones to throw at your party at different sort of like level points uh, as you go through. Um, I've got eight of them here, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through the eight. Uh, and I'm, we're going to talk about why they're cool, why they're like actually scary, why they're pretty tough, um, and why they are things that uh, are worth actually tossing to your players. Um, I have brief notes written down on all these. There might be a minute where I have to take a second to, like, look something up real quick. Bear with me. But let's go ahead and let's get into it. Starting at the lowest CR, all the way down at CR 1 half. You know what it is already. It's not a proper ghost, but God, it might as well be the shadow. The shadow, I have talked about it so many times on this channel before. I've talked about it over on TikTok. I've talked about it on YouTube. I've talked about it on a bunch of different things. The shadow is the most poorly ranked monster in terms of CR in the entire game, in my opinion. This thing is an absolute nightmare for players because it's ranked so low, so people just kind of throw it at them, and all of a sudden, their wizard will be dead because it has zero strength. Strength sap being its thing, you roll a d4 when it hits things, and it takes the strength away from them, and if your strength score hits zero, you die! That's it, you're just dead! So crazy crazy stuff to me um i adore the shadow i use it often i do not use it against low level party members i learned my lesson the hard way at one point um but i use it all the time against mid level players honestly even some high level players because they are suddenly shocked when their strength score starts dropping uh throw it at a fighter or a barbarian and even though they'll be cleaving through a few of them very quickly they will become nervous and i cannot recommend it enough because it is a lot of fun um Rolling on down the list, we have at CR2, the Poltergeist. Um, th this one is fun. Uh, I skipped past a Spectre. You might know if you know that they're those are CR1. Uh, they don't have anything like that really stuck out to me. Obviously, their whole like reduce hit points, reduce hit point max thing is great. But the Poltergeist is more fun, in my opinion. At CR2, it not only offers a little bit of a challenge for those lower levels, uh, it doesn't have an auto kill. Uh, in it the way that the shadow does um, or honestly even the specter does the poltergeist instead uses telekinesis to fling things around the battlefield uh, which is a lot of fun it's it's got some like decent like stats and stuff otherwise too but the fact that it it can just go ahead and just chuck stuff clear across the field is what i like about it it's what it is why uh i pulled it for this sort of like cr range um, but this is a really good like level two-ish haunted house like boss kind of monster uh, because it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, it can be a threat and the fact that it can attack things from range unlike a lot of the other ghosts uh, makes it a threat but the fact that it uh, doesn't have an auto kill doesn't make it a hyper deadly threat immediately. <laughs> so um, definitely recommend checking out Poltergeist for that sort of range. Um, Continuing on forward, we have the Banshee at CR4. Uh, I picked the distinguishing feature for this one to be the Whale, even though uh, it's got a couple of really, really awesome things in here. Uh, the Whale, specifically, does a lot of really great stuff. Um, it uh, You are forced to make a constitution save or become, I believe it is, uh, if you fail, you immediately drop to zero hit points. Um, and if you succeed, you take like 3d10 psychic damage or something like that. Uh, excuse me, as I scroll, you probably saw the light change on my face here, um, to make sure that I got that correct. 
um, Banshee. Uh, yeah, so uh, it has no effect on constructs or undead. If you fail the constitution saving throw, you drop to zero hit points. You don't just follow unconscious. You drop to zero hit points. On a success, you take 3d6 psychic damage. That adds up to 10. That's where I got that from. Um, horrifying Visage is also a good one in there, but it is, at the end of the day, just Horrifying Visage. It's nothing overly special with that one. Mm. Next up, moving on down, still at the same level, actually, though, uh, I pulled just the regular Ghost. Uh, <laughs> because, quite frankly, the regular Ghost is a little bit scary as well. Um, you might think, oh, that's a little strange. It's, it's a lot of fun because a regular ghost has the possession feature. <laughs> Still CR4, as I mentioned, um, but it uh, has a rechargeable possession feature that recharges, recharges on a roll of six, which means that it is not the most likely to recharge, but you still actually like can use it more than once a day. Um, it attempts to make a, uh, it forces a creature, there we go, to make a DC 13 charisma saving throw or the target becomes incapacitated, and the ghost takes control of the body. Um, it doesn't deprive it of awareness, and it the ghost itself can't be targeted by an attack, spell, or other effect, except for those that turn undead, like turn undead. Um, and it retains all of its like intelligence-based stats. Um, otherwise possesses the target statistics, but doesn't gain access to the target's knowledge class features or proficiencies. Uh, lasts until the body drops to zero hit points, which is fun. Um, so uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun because suddenly <laughs> you're making your party members uh, fight back against each other uh, while also not really fighting each other. Like, don't take the agency away from your players for too terribly long doing that, but it can be a lot of fun to go ahead and get to, like, just take them over for a little bit and instill that little bit of fear in them that, like, you could take their character at any point that you want to. Uh, so definitely, definitely recommend just the straight-up ghost. It's not anything flashy. It is just a ghost, but it is a lot of fun. Um, sliding down the list, slightly higher CR, CR6, we have the Gallows Speaker. We're over halfway through now. Gallows Speaker um, with the, like, big thing for me in this one being Suffering Echoes. Uh, and you will see why in a second here. The Suffering Echoes allows it to target a creature within 30 feet of it. They have to make a DC 15 wisdom save or take 3d12 psychic damage and have painful waves of memories explode out from it to up to three other creatures that the Gala Speaker chooses within 30 feet of the target, each of which takes 3d8 psychic damage. It's kind of like a chain lightning, like powered way down, but it's using psychic damage, which is a wildly under-resisted uh, type of damage. And it's a CR6 monster. <laughs> it can just kind of like blast out to this. That said, uh, it is a uh, save or suck kind of thing. So if you save against it, there's no effect to it. So that is a burned through action at that point. You have to target your low wisdom characters with that in order for it to like spread and do some more damage. Um, and even then, your higher wisdom characters will save from the sort of expansion from there. Um, the other thing about this one that is... I didn't pick it as its, like, thing, but it's still extremely good, is its regular attack is foretelling touch. Um, and essentially, you hit somebody with it, and they are baned for one uh, roll for the next attack roller saving throw. So you hit somebody with it, and they roll a d4 immediately and subtract that from the next attack roller saving throw that they make uh, before the start of the Gallows Speaker's next turn. That is phenomenal. That is it's so good. Uh, just being able to like dish that out every, once a turn is absolutely fantastic. And because of the way that action economy works, that is going to be your opportunity attack pretty much because it is a melee attack. Um, it's a melee spell attack technically, so it gets a little hazy, but at the end of the day, that is really kind of going to be what you are going with. Um, and it, it's, just, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I like it a lot. I think it, it was... Uh, a cool sort of like creature to be able to toss out at your players. Uh, sliding down the list, we are at CR8. Um, this one is another one that I believe is wildly misrepresented in a very specific way, and it's the thing that I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is the Obzidat Ghost. I hope I said that right. Maybe it's Ob Obzidat. Obz I don't know. O-B-Z-E-D-A-T Ghost. Um, this is a CR8 monster. 
not too bad, right? Except for the fact that it its feature is the thing that really makes me confused about it. Not only is it a legendary creature, which gives it, obviously, legendary resistance, legendary actions, um, only one uh, legendary resistance, and uh, legendary actions only uh, if a set number of them are within 30 feet of each other. However, the thing that really blows this one out of the water is that the Obzidek Ghost is a CR8 monster. However, it has a feature that is an action called Convene the Ghost Council, uh, and it summons the other four members of this council. At the start of its next turn, all of the other members appear in, unoccup in unoccupied spaces within 30 feet of it, each rolling initiative at that point. Um, so that means that you are going from one CR8 monster to five CR8 monsters immediately, assuming that, you know, it can stay away from the party for long enough to get to its next turn. It has a fly speed of 30 feet with hover, uh, and it can't walk. So, like, it can just fly up and away, summon all of the other ones, and then it's got all five of these CR8 ghosts with it. Um, so, be careful with this one, or reduce the number it can summon, because eight or five CR8s is suddenly a wildly different encounter than one CR8. Uh, so be careful with that. The rest of its other, the rest of its features are nothing like super, super exciting, but they are still pretty cool. Um, each of the ghosts has a specific uh, that feature that comes with it, so you're gonna have to keep track of which one is which and all that. But it is a an overall fairly cool thing. I just it, CR8. That seems a little extreme to me, man. But that's just me. Um, once again, moving down the list to our second to last one here, we have the Draconic Shard. Um, this is, a CR 17, I know, huge jump from 8, but honestly, there weren't that many ghosts in between 8 and 17 for some reason, like strictly ghost-speaking ones, uh, and the ones that were there, I didn't like that much. They weren't that particularly interesting to me. Um, so, the, uh, Draconic Shard stuck out to me, uh, because it can inhabit objects to start uh that that's cool like it has the ability to essentially create a sentient weapon for the time being um because why not right um but the thing that really stuck out to me with this one is its psychic crush feature it recharges on a five or six uh, it releases a pulse of power each creature within 60 feet of the uh shard must make a dc 20 intelligence save Failing takes or failing deals 10d10 psychic damage, and they are stunned until the end of the shard's next turn. Um, obviously, half as much and no stun on a save, but you have to beat a DC 20 intelligent save in order to not be stunned in that way, which is a lot. It really is a lot, um, and so I, I really like that. Um, I. Obviously, I like things that do psyche damage anyway, um, but the fact that this is something that can, like, possess a weapon and, like, send out these blasts is really, really amazing to me. Um, I I can't say enough good things about this. Uh, this one came from Fizzbands, and I love Fizzbands. So, you know, I'm kind of biased to start. Um, and finally, we come to our last ghost of this list here. Uh, if you know, or if you're intimately familiar with the list of ghosts, uh, you, I'm sure, will be familiar with this one. It is the only uh, named ghost uh, that I picked out of this whole list because it is also the highest-ranked CR ghost uh, in the official materials. However, it's me. How could it be anything but the ghost of a dragon? At CR 22, Mirim is the uh, the the bottom of my top of bottom of my list, whichever direction you want to be going with it. Um, this is a uh, the ghost of a silver dragon. It came in Candlekeep. It is specific to a Candlekeep-like adventure, but you can obviously use it elsewhere. Um, the thing that really sticks out in this one is the fact that it retains its cold breath, which is fantastic. Uh, 15d8 uh, cold damage, uh, cold breath. But it also gains a necrotic breath, which is a uh, DC 21 deck save, 120-foot uh, line, 15d10 necrotic damage. Uh, about 82 for you guys who are using uh, standard rolls at home. Uh, and it picks up a paralyzing breath, which is a 90-foot cone uh, of gas. Each creature in that area needs to make a D21 constitution saving throw or be paralyzed for a minute saving or repeating the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. Um, 
and ending the effect on a success. Uh, other than that, it is a largely regular sort of dragon, um, but it also does have uh, things like regeneration and incorporeal movement, the things that come with being a ghost. Um, I really, really like this one too, because again, it is, it's a dragon and it's a ghost. It, it's the two things that I like the most. Um, I know that there's a ghost dragon in there that is actually technically, I believe, categorized as a dragon, um, but this one is more fun than that one to me, at least. Um, so those are the most fun ghosts, I think, in official 5e materials to throw at your players. Uh, it is October. It's Halloween time. It is running those spooky one shots time. It's running those spooky chapters of your campaign time. Go ahead throw some of these guys at them uh make sure you are ready for it because these are some particularly difficult enemies on occasion and you don't want to accidentally uh well maybe you do want to accidentally kill someone i didn't say that um getting right along here to the shows that we have for today um they are technically off i believe now but it's wednesday which means that i'm going to mention dimension 20 uh knocked prone venture maidens trials and trebuchets and roll out Go ahead and check them out. Let them know that I sent you because, again, someday somebody's going to say something to me about it, and I'm going to think it's funny. But until then, I'm going to keep asking you guys to do it. Um, so, with all that said, that's everything I have to talk to you guys about. Uh, with all that said, is the end of my side out, not the beginning of it. So, thank you guys so very much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check out the link in the episode description here. Um, but, yes... Now, that is everything I have to talk to you guys about. So, with all that said, there we go. Don't forget, everybody. Drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling.